dear friends in this session we will be discussing on cooperative society which is one of the decision on form of ownership knowing about this will help you in identifying and deciding on what kind of ownership you can have when you are starting with your new business or new unit form so let's understand what the meaning of cooperative society is a cooperative society is an autonomous association of person who voluntarily cooperate for the social economic and cultural benefits the philosophy of cooperative society is to serve the common man and to liberate him from the oppressions of the economically strong people and organizations mutual assistance and services are the objectives as distinguished from the aim of the other forms of organization which is primarily making of profit like if you are going with the sole proprietorship partnership or a joint stock company the cooperative society is somewhat different from them in the mutual assistance and the service they are providing the major objective of cooperative society is to serve social economic and cultural benefit to the people around us and they that will definitely make the people come out of the operation of the economically strong people and the large organization so let's understand what are the uh, what is the definition of cooperative society a cooperative society is a voluntary association that started with the aim of service of its members it is a form of business where individuals belonging to the same class join their hands for the promotion of their common goals these are generally formed by poor people or weaker sections of people in society it reflects the desire of the poor people to stand on their legs or own merit so next and let's understand the characteristics of a cooperative society first one is that voluntary association everybody having a common interest is free to join a cooperative society there is no restriction based on caste creed religion color or anything else anybody can also leave it at any time after giving due notice to the society that is the speciality of any cooperative society there should be a minimum of 10 members for a cooperative society but there is no maximum limit of the members the next is separate legal entity a cooperative society after registration is recognized as a separate legal entity by law it acquires an identity quite distinct and independent of its member can purchase dispose of its assets can sue and also can be sued so next is the democratic management equalities are the essence of cooperative enterprises governed by democratic principles every member has got equal rights over the function and management of the society as such each member has only single voting right irrespective of the number of shares held or capital contributed by them in the case of a cooperative society no member dictates the terms and conditions of the functioning because one man one vote is the thumb rule of the cooperative society next service motive the main objective being the formation of any cooperative society is for mutual benefit through self help and collective effort profit is not at all on the agenda of the cooperative society but if the members so like they can take up any activities of the choice to generate a surplus to meet the day to day expenses of the society let next one is that utilization of surplus the surplus arising from the operations of a business is partly kept in a separate reserve and partly distributed as a dividend among the members of the society next cash trading one exception in the cooperative society is that like other business if never go for credit sales it sells goods based on cash only hence the cooperative society hardly comes across financial hardship because of the non collecting of sales dues members can only purchase based on credit which is an exception to the present rule next is fixed rate of return all members are supposed to contribute capital for the formation of a cooperative society or at the time of joining as a member of the cooperative society next government control 
or the government regulates all the cooperative society of the country through its different rules and regulation frame from time to time. Cooperative societies of the country are required to register and sometimes different state governments also frame laws regarding the registration and functioning of cooperative society of the states. Next, capital. The capital of the society is raised from its member by way of shared capital. However, the major part of finance is raised by the society by taking a loan from the government or by accepting grants and assistance from the central or the state government or from the apex cooperative institutions like state and cooperative central banks operating in that specific state. Next, let's understand what are the objectives of the cooperative society. The following point describes some of the main objectives of a cooperative society, such as enhancing cooperation, high level of service, and higher profits. Let's begin with the enhancing cooperation. Cooperative society aims to encourage complete cooperation between everybody involved with an organization. They are generally against the idea of any sort of hierarchy and consider everyone to be equal. This can improve relationships between staff members and senior management as well as, as well as between service providers and the customers. High level of service, that is better working relationship naturally led to the higher productivity levels. So a better service is given to customers. This raises customer satisfaction levels, which is the primary aim of many cooperative societies. For instance, students' accommodation units may be cooperative societies. Students will be happier with their accommodation and the staff members will find their working life much easier. So next is that higher profit. Many cooperative societies are essentially out to make a profit and believe that enhancing relationship will lead to high profit levels. Of course, this plan may not always work, but in many cases, it has proved effective. Some charities have also benefited from operating as a cooperative societies. As charity members become more focused on their work, raising more money for the cause in question. Now let's understand the types of cooperative societies uh, that has been segregated as follows. Producers cooperative society, consumers cooperative society, cooperative group housing societies, thrift and credit cooperative societies, and marketing cooperative societies, and etc. Let's understand each of the uh, societies in detail. Producers cooperative society, these societies protect the interest of producers who are basically small in size by making available terms of their needs for production of raw materials, tools, equipment, and machineries. Consumers cooperative societies, like these societies, are formed on the basis of general consumers by making consumer goods available at a reasonable price. In this type of society, goods purchased directly from the producer, this eliminates the middleman in the process of distribution, such as Kendriya Bhandar, Apna Bazaar, and Super Bazaar are examples of the, uh, such kind of consumers cooperative societies. Next, cooperative group housing society. Group housing societies are like uh, residential societies which provide residential houses to the members. They purchase land and construct the house of flats and allot the same to the members of the society. Next, thrift and credit cooperative society. Thrift and credit cooperative societies provides financial support to the members. They accept deposits from members and grant them the loans at reasonable rates of interest in times of need. Village service cooperative societies and urban cooperative banks are examples of cooperative credit societies. Next, marketing cooperative societies. Marketing cooperative societies are often used of small producers and manufacturers who find it difficult to sell their products individually. Marketing societies collect the product from individuals and take responsibility of selling those products. Example like marketing cooperative society in Gujarat, Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation, and Amul. In our Karnataka, we have KMF. All those are marketing cooperative societies. Uh, let's see some of the uh, 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 details about the. Uh, in this website, uh, sahakara.karnatakagovernment.in, you will find the list of societies in our Karnataka state, which has been registered as per the Karnataka's cooperative societies uh, law act. 
So uh, next is that what are the merits of the cooperative society? And uh, what are, to begin with the first one, it is easy formation. Easy formation um, means la, the, the way we have discussed in our last sessions, it is uh, very easy to form a cooperative society as compared to a joint stock company. The simple requirement is 10 or more members uh, have to make written application to register with four copies of bylaws. Next, open membership. Cooperative society work on the principle of open membership. Therefore, many persons can become members. The members are not restricted to a few persons only. Next, democratic management. All the members of the society are jointly known as the general body, whereas the members who manage the cooperative society are jointly known as the managing committee. They democratically manage a cooperative society. One member, one vote is the rule, and thus members can have a voice in the management. Next, limited liability. The limited, uh, the liability of the members remains limited to the extent of capital contributed by them. He is not personally liable to pay any kind of liability of a cooperative society. Generally, his liability is limited up to the face value of the shares only. Stability and the continuity. The cooperative society has perpetual succession. That means that people will come and people will go, but the company will remain uh, and it will definitely continue. So the, the uh, whether the people die, still in the uh, company goes insolvent or lunacy, the uh, members go insolvent or uh, lunacy, uh, the company will definitely keep going. Next, low prices. A cooperative society can make goods and services available at a reasonable cost as the profit margin of the society is very less. Other reasons for the low price at a cooperative society is that it eliminates the middleman from the chain of distribution. For example, in our Karnataka, we have uh, Karnataka Milk Federation. There is a cooperative society which work for the benefit of milk distributors. All those people who in our state who they want to distribute the milk, they register under the KMF and they have uh, their uh, accessibility all over the state. And as per their rules and regulations, they distribute the, the milk. Like that in India, we have Amul. Okay, next. That is Anand Milk Union Limited. It's mutual help. The basic aim of the cooperative society is mutual help. Some of the members realizing this principle may offer their services on a honorary basis also. Uh, this brings a reduction in management expenses. The next one is the social advantage. A cooperative society discourages the kind of monopoly in the market. It brings a better distribution of wealth works on the principle of service and controls the exploitation of any kind of resources and the people. Next, mobilization of savings. A cooperative society is a thrift institution. It provides an effective means of pooling together the resources of the weaker sections of the society by checking extravagance. It in inculcates the habit of savings among the people. Such mobilized financial resources are used for the constructive purposes. Next is remove defects of capitalism. The, this form of organization removes the certain basic defects of capitalism. For example, monopoly. The undue concentration of wealth in a few hands, profiteering, black marketing, exploitation of workers and consumers, etc. These glaring defects of capitalism have no place under a cooperative organizations. Through the process of integration, it removes the middleman. Next, cash trading. The cooperative society follow the principles of cash and carry. As a result of this, there are no bad debts and they can enjoy the benefits of various discount and concessions. This also inculcates the habit of saving among the members. Next, government support. A cooperative society is the people's movement. Moreover, it promotes moral, social, and educational values. It also helps the economic enrichment of the people. That is why the government gives many concessions and privileges to this type of organization.
let's understand various disadvantages of the cooperative society first one is that limitation of capital in a cooperative society there's a limitation of a capital because the members of the society is indirectly limited only up to a local people the members also generally belong to the poor or a middle class the state control a cooperative society is governed by the provisions of the cooperative society act or law the composition of maintaining records submission of audited returns and inspection by the government are the ways through which the state exercise the control over the societies efficient inefficient management the management of a cooperative society is inefficient because the working members of the managing committee may not show a keen interest in the working of the society now members also lack the manager's skill and intelligence because they generally belong to the lower class next absence of business secrecy this the officers of the cooperative societies are generally so much exposed to the members that it becomes difficult for them to maintain a proper secrecy and it is compulsory to advertise the annual account and annual reports of the society in the newspaper and other advertising channels next lack of motivation there is a lack of motivation for the managing committee and other staff members because there is no relation between efforts and rewards the rate of dividend is also restricted to 15% this discourages the public from joining a cooperative society next political interference the cooperative society acts as a platform for social activities at the time of election of the managing committee some of the political parties get involved in it due to which the basic principle of the cooperation comes to the end this also leads to the corruption of power and money in society and may result in quarrels and dispute among the members next limited scope like capitalism the cooperative society system cannot be extended to embrace the whole economic system it has limited scope in the sense that it cannot cover the entire economic system the principle of cooperative cooperation cannot be successfully applied to organize organize all types of economic activities for example a cooperative society is not suitable for an organizing big industrial enterprises it is also not suitable where the element of speculation plays a predominant role and where finer varieties with maximum skill are to be produced next internal quarrel and rivalries internal quarrel and rivalries among members is another limitations of cooperative society as a result of these internal quarrels rivalries and tensions general body becomes member ceases to take any interest in the working of the organization all this ultimately brings the cooperative society to ruin next lack of public confidence generally people do not have faith and confidence in the cooperative society since many cooperative societies have failed the people are reluctant to become members of cooperative organization the general apathy and indifference of people come in the way of development of the organizations next absence of economics of scale like the so, uh, joint stock company has economics of scale in cooperative society us is absent this organization is very small in size it does not have financial managerial and technical resources as a result of this the advantages of large scale operations like jsc are not available to these organizations restrictions of number as per the prevailing legislation cooperative society cannot be formed unless and until a minimum of 10 adult members are available adult member here means the people with more than a age of 18 as a result of this its growth is checked because less than 10 members cannot form a society so these are the some of the disadvantages of the cooperative society hoping that that you people have understood the various forms of ownership in a business and you will be able to decide on which form to adopt when you are starting with your own business thank you very much